Hello, I'm Alistair Greener in the Telegraph studios. And today we're going to be talking about IT security. And I'm joined by Andrew Avanesian, who is the Executive Vice President of Consultancy and Technology Services at Avecto. Good morning. Good morning, Asta. So securing your enterprise can be a daunting prospect in today's IT world with new threats emerging on a daily basis. So what do you feel is the biggest barrier to companies making the right decisions? There's lots of things to consider there. I think one of the main things to talk about here is that there is no silver bullet to IT security. There's lots of fear created by all the jargon that IT security companies use, that the media creates. There's lots of hype around APTs. You know, what, what are they? What are advanced persistent threats? Watering hole attacks. Um, drive-by downloads, malware coming out all the time. There's always something in the news about a new and latest hack. The, the key thing is all of that leads to a fear culture within IT. Massive disconnection between corporate boards that often are made up of sales and finance backgrounds. Rare to see uh, IT knowledge on a corporate board, rare to see C CIOs on corporate boards. So there's often decisions that are made which are based on fear which are very reactionary, which leads to a negative approach to IT security, a negative impact of IT security. You know, it shouldn't be a negative thing. It, I, security should be an enabler at the end of the day. And I think that fear creates decisions which are made incorrectly, essentially, because it's difficult to decide for the noise versus what actually the organisation should be doing. So you talked there about a culture of fear within businesses when it comes to security. Are they actually caught between a rock and a hard place, trying to keep the wheels of business in motion and keeping their enterprise secure? The real question that we need to, to answer here is, is how we get that balance, how we compromise between security, being locked and well-managed on one side, and how we give people the freedom to do the job. And that's what leads to, you know, if you don't have that freedom, security is weakened, people are overprivileged, they've got too much access to systems, and then they can uh, result in, it can result in data breaches, essentially. So I think what we need to do is strike that balance between security on one side, freedom on the other, and, and allow organisations, allow IT departments to understand what's happening, what the needs are of an organisation, to, to strike that right balance. And it's a cultural question as well. It's not just about risk versus mitigation. It's about understanding the cultural landscape within an environment and how that impacts on security as an enabler within that organisation. So what's the solution here? How can we solve this problem? Of course there's solutions out there. There's lots of security companies that, that fix part of the problem. And one of the things that, that typically happens is you end up with, as a business, implementing lots of different security technologies that try and patch certain holes within your landscape. This shouldn't be a compromise. You shouldn't have to, to compromise security versus freedom. But the problem that we face is the reason that organisations do that is because they don't take a proactive approach to security. There's, there's four or five simple things that you can do to shift from the very reactive approach to security, implementing technologies like AV that, at best, only catch 50% of attacks to a kind of proactive landscape. And the way you do that is to carry out things like application control, application wirelisting, only allowing the, the known good to run, patching your applications, patching your operating systems, removing excessive privileges from your environment. That's backed up by industry bodies like SANS, the Cyber Security Council. They've got the, the top 20 mitigation strategies. They're, they're within their top five the Australian Department of Defence, that's within their top four. And they, you know, those bodies have carried out lots and lots of tests on these, on these solutions and find that they capture, you know, 85% plus, 90% plus of the vulnerabilities that would exist. So you're moving from this detection piece where you're trying to detect the bad guys doing something to a proactive approach to security where you're locked and well managed. And then you need to ask yourself the question, how do I bring in the user freedom in all of that? Okay, so let's actually see this in action. So say, for example, I'm a CIO of a medium-sized business here in London. I've got 2,500 users, and I come to you and I say I want to secure my endpoints, and I want to do that effectively and properly. Talk me through the process. What actually happens? Okay, so one of the first things that we're going we're to do is we're going to come in and understand your business because that's crucial to, to the, the total approach. So we have a consultation approach where we come in, we understand what your requirements are, what your use cases are. We do a gap analysis on where you want to be versus what you actually need. 
And then what we'll do is leverage our technology that allows you to strike that balance, allows you to, to not have to compromise between security on one side and freedom on the other. And we do that through our Defend Point technology. It allows you to remove administrative rights so there's no other privileged users in your estate anymore. You're operating with a, the most secure Microsoft, uh, most secure platform Microsoft can provide. You then implement application control as part of that as well, so you're only allowing the known good applications to run. You then sandbox those known good applications as well, because they could have attack vectors that, that, that are exposed. Lots of apps within an organization that you need to allow to run, but potentially security weaknesses. So we put those in their own little bubble. So that's the technology piece. The consultation journey piece is, as I've said, understanding your requirements, building that into an implementation methodology that takes you from where you are today, which is very reactive, to the proactive approach, and then le leveraging the freedom on top of that. And that consultation journey has been built up across hundreds of customers, across millions of end users, and it's proven to be robust and secure in the most demanding environments. Now, if I might say so, you sound a little bit like the sheriff coming into the Wild West, getting rid of all of the bad boys and leaving all of us to live our lives in peace. But looking into the future, are we really going to be following blindly these external suppliers like that? It's a, it's a great analogy you come out with there, Alistair, but I think the important thing is, is building that trust relationship. You know, nobody should just blindly trust a vendor blindly trust what they, they hear in the media or on the web, for example. What we're looking to do is, is as part of that consultation journey I talked to you about earlier, is come in, understand your business, because that's crucial. If we don't understand what you guys are trying to do, how can we build that trust relationship? And the important thing for us is that we've got that industry recognition, we've got that knowledge. We're not just giving you advice on our solution, we're giving you advice on security best practices, which is backed up by industry leaders, by industry bodies like SANS, like the DOD in Australia. So we're building that trust with you and we're partnering with you for success. What you're absolutely not doing from a vector is you're not buying a piece of software. You're buying a successful project. We're not interested in selling you a piece of software and then walking away. We're interested in, to, we're interested in understanding what your success criteria are and partnering with you for that successful implementation. Well, it certainly seems a huge amount for us to think about in the future. Andrew Evanessian from Avecto, thank you very much. Thanks.